Welcome back to another edition of Between Two Fars. I'm Warnicky Miller, and I am here once again with the wonderful Dave Schumann and the illustrative Robert Tepfer. And Dave and Bob are talking to us about some very important things you need to keep in mind as you proceed with your contract litigation and that's communication with management. It is vital that you communicate effectively with management. And we're gonna take some time today with these litigation professionals, these veterans of the ASBCA procurement process to just give you some step-by-step -step insights and tips on how to best communicate your litigation risks and procedures with your management. Dave, Bob, what should we be keeping in mind when we're talking litigation with our management team? So uh, I'll just give my two cents first. So Warnicky uh, hit the nail on the head, communication with management, but the nail is really two nails. It's communication with the client and the client's management and communication with um, general counsel management, um, all of whom need to be kept um, in the loop uh, frequently, especially with respect to resources needed. Uh, going through discovery is one thing, but the resource needs increase uh, tremendously uh, getting ready for trial. Uh, I'll mention one anecdote which led me to a very critical settlement discussion in litigation uh, and hopefully can be avoided, but we had a situation where we had just unfortunately uh, me as the sole practitioner uh, defending the claim, getting ready for litigation. Uh, to put together the Rule 4 file, I told the clients, because we had such limited resources, put everything in our files in the Rule 4 file. Well, our judge didn't like that, notwithstanding the fact that the board rules don't actually place an explicit limit on what goes in the Rule 4 file, and some are actually boxes and boxes and boxes. Uh, ours was done electronically, of course, because it was during the pandemic, but um, in a pre-hearing conference call, the judge said, well, NASA, you're following objections by the other side. What you did is you just put all your files in the Rule 4 file. That's not how it works. I'm striking that. So, uh, you know, my heart just sank immediately because that was, to me, the most expedient way to deal with lack of resources is put everything in there in case we might need it for the hearing. So we had to enter every single exhibit we wanted in the Rule 4 file during the hearing which was just absolutely terrifying and affected um, the cross-examination and examination of witnesses because much of it was geared towards getting the basic documents in. But this can be avoided, of course, with the right resources at the beginning and um, subject of a different episode, um, NASA needs to assign the right uh, resources, uh, lawyer resources, hopefully paralegal support, and the client needs to assign the right resources so that we can do this job correctly in the first place, put together in our situation um, a rule four file with just the critical documents that are relevant that we want introduced as opposed to our entire file uh, with enough time in advance of the hearing that we don't have this terrifying incident <laughs> just prior to the hearing. Uh, resources and uh, management are, are very, very critical. And, and But the thing that I would really, really stress is you have to sit down with your management. You have to educate them. I have never had a case where I sat down with like the program director or for that matter, the uh, deputy center director and the attitude, and they've explicitly said in some instances, is we did everything right. You really don't have much to worry about with your case. I mean, if we did it right. Your job, you can only lose this case is what they were saying. You can't win it because we won it. And that kind of an attitude, you want to sit them down and say, you know, if that were the case, we wouldn't be going to court right now. And that kind of a burden on the attorneys is just horrible. And it demonstrates a total misunderstanding as to what happened with regard to the risk. Dave mentioned prior to... Uh, are being on the, the fact that the memos that you can put together to advise them. I think that's a wonderful thing to do. And it has to be iterative in, to the extent that the facts change, the risk changes, and management needs to know. I like, he said, to have them sign it. Well, I don't know if you can pull that one off uh, when you're dealing with the deputy center director. But the reality is nobody wants to say that there's even a inkling that anything took 
you know, place that was wrong. And that uh, continuing involvement in management is necessary to get the resources, understand the risk. If they understand the risk, they may understand the need for settlement. And it's, it's very, very important. But, you know, too many times you get tied up with the witnesses, too tied up in the documents and discovery. You can't either get the support or management acts surprised. And they don't understand how this case can evolve. I've had management say, I want all the steps explained as to the litigation. And I'll be sitting there at the beginning and I made ma management very angry when I said, you tell me what they're gonna do to me and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do to them. You know, <laughs> because I, you know, I can't forecast that. I do know that they have a lot more in the way of resources than, than we will ever have. And as a result, they will try to exhaust you. Management needs to prevent that from occurring. So as you can see, yes, any thoughts? It work. If I could just add on to that, because Bob reminded me of something in terms of education. Um, so, um, yes, the lawyers are a bit more familiar with litigation and getting ready for trial, but litigation at NASA is a rare event. Um, that's a really good thing, right? I mean, one of the things I'm most proud of is, uh, you know, one protest in, in 31 years. Um, th the main point, like we said earlier, is not to have litigation, and some of that's luck, of course, but uh, you like to think some is preparation, but the main thing is um, litigation is a rare event and trials, um, full blown trial all the way through to verdict is extremely rare. So Bob's exactly right in terms of educating management and the client as to what's involved. Even within our own organization, there's a dearth of experience um, in trial, full blown trial all the way to verdict and the amount of time it, it sucks up. So it's subject of another uh, episode, claims are very different than protests. Protests, everything <laughs> stops. You get the full attention of your client. You get all the resources you want and it's over and done in, in a couple of months. Uh, claim is the opposite. And uh, you know, as Bob touched on, many times you feel like there's only a downside to this. You know, if we lose, what's the upside after, in my case, five years of sacrificing myself and my family? Well, we've saved $2 million, but that's that's a potential liability, right? So, you know, the education part um, for our management as line attorneys uh, is extremely important, uh, not to mention um, educating the client. And, and this can be done and should be done frequently, you know, at least probably once a month, maybe more frequently as you get closer to trial and maybe even in the middle of trial if you had time and we didn't have time to breathe. But in theory, if you had the re right resources, you would keep everybody, the client organization and our legal management organization uh, up to speed fully. Yes, as you can see, it is very important to have management aware of the reasonable expectations and risks from the beginning of threatened litigation all the way through the hearing, the trial, and the subsequent decision by the court. This is not something that should be taken lightly. And while these gentlemen have said, oh, it's so difficult, it's so difficult, you have to remember, we have got some top attorneys here, two of which you're looking at, and they do take litigation seriously. And if we're going to be engaged in litigation, it will be a hard fought battle because we have got some fantastic attorneys. However, management needs to be aware that they will be sacrificing the time and the resources of their top attorneys along with their own clients and technicians, engineers, and other physical human resources that you need to pull off a full-blown trial. We'll see you again next time between two FARs.